So the next step is to use a muscle solidify. Why do we want to do this? Well, if we didn't, we would end up with just this membrane for each muscle and it wouldn't keep its volume and it wouldn't behave like a nice soft body with jiggle and it also wouldn't be able to contract. So it's basically essential for the rest of the workflow to solidify your muscles. And what does it mean by solidifying? Well, instead of having surface polygons, we're going to create tetrahedrons that make up the entire volume of this, of each muscle. So if we look here, you see these primitives are now all tetrahedrons, whereas before they were all polygons. So what is a tetrahedron? Well, it is a four-sided triangular pyramid. Let's blast. Oh dear, what was that? Let's blast with delete non-selected on one of these. It looks like I'm selecting a triangular face, right? But it's actually, lo and behold, a tetrahedron, our four-sided triangular pyramid. And this is, you see, it's got one primitive, one tetrahedron. So Houdini sees this as a single entity. It doesn't see it as four faces. Okay. So that is something to keep in mind. Now let's look at the actual settings. So the max tet size will deal with the internal tet size, but the surface tets, their size is going to be controlled by these, the remesh. So you can see that if I tweak these values, what appears to be surface triangles will change, but there, remember, they're not just triangles, they're actually the tets that are at the surface. But now I want to put down a clip node so that we can see what's going on in, on the inside. Right, so this clip basically creates a clipping plane that you can see inside things. So let's look in here. So you see this belly cavity is connected all together with tets. It's true for everything, but the belly cavity is the easiest to see. And this is where these internal tets we can control their size with this max tet size. Now it's going to take a while because the size was already limited by this remesh um, surface size because it sort of interpolated the remaining surface based on what's there. So it takes a while for me to, I need to go to quite a low value before this max tet, tet size is going to affect the internal tet size. And it also takes a while to cook. So it's worth knowing that this is a bit of a slow node, but luckily we only need to do it once. Um, you know, not on every frame, and then we're going to cache it out to speed things up in a minute. I think I've gone a bit slow now. So to deal with this, when you've gone too slow and it's taking forever to cook, hit escape key on your keyboard. I like to hit it until it stops. There we go. You'll get an error, but that's just because it didn't finish cooking, and then you can quickly fix the problem value. And if there are multiple ones, you can change it to manual. Then you can tweak the values quickly without it updating as you're setting it. And you can either click this to refresh it once, that is not what I meant to click, or set it back to auto update. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this. Oh, let me just cover this. Use initialization frame is the simplest setting to use here because it just means use whatever geometry is incoming on the first frame, but it's static, it's the correct depose on all frames. So it's completely fine to use. If you said form at attribute and you specified tpos here, you would have to create your tpos attribute. Um, and there's no reason to bother doing that because you can, this node actually creates a tpos for you. So, I mean, I don't know what situation you would actually not want to use this and use a tpos attribute instead, but I suppose people do things in weird ways sometimes, so it's good to have flexibility, but I, I think in most situations this will be perfectly useful. The enable multi-threading is just going to send each muscle to a different core to tetrahedralize separately um, because they're independent of one another, but then it can happen faster because they can happen at the same time. Now, one thing I also want to point out, you can see this can be toggled off. Um, so it won't remesh the surface first before tetrahedralizing. Then what you can do instead, it does still triangulate those quads though. What you can do instead is you can do a surface remesh beforehand. You can set it with your adaptive edge lengths, if you prefer to match the muscle solidify more closely. And the only reason you'd want to do this is for more control. It's not, um, that's completely fine to do it the other way. I just want to point out that using that if you 
want to try and get similar values to what you already had on your muscle solidify. Um, on the muscle solidify, you'll see it goes min size and then max size. On the remesh, it goes max size and then min size. So don't let that trip you up because it's tripped me up a bunch of times. Um, so now you see it's going to use these incoming um, surface triangles to create surface tets, and then it will carry on in percolating the rest of the tets. So yes, this is the more advanced, more control method, and this is the simpler, perfectly acceptable method. And I do just want to reiterate, I mentioned it in an earlier video, that if you have self-intersecting muscles, then this method, remeshing it on the muscle solidify, will fix self-intersections, whereas turning this off and remeshing externally will not fix self-intersections. Then you'll have to make sure that you fix your self-intersections manually if you want them to be fixed. So that is just something to bear in mind. Now, the one last thing we want to do is to cache out our result. I'm going to create a file cache node. I want to uncheck time-dependent cache because it's static. We don't want multiple frames cached out. I'm going to remove dollar hip name, which is the file name, because I don't want that in my file name. Well, sorry, in the cached file name. Um, but I do want it to be this dollar $OS, which means the name of this node. If I middle click here, you can see the value. So if I change this, it will update in real time. So I'm going to say muscle um, solidified. Real time is maybe a bit of a strong word, but now once I've hit enter, it's updated it. So I'm going to middle click there and you'll see it's still dollar $OS, but it will update to whatever I've got here. Dollar hip refer it's an environment variable that refers to the folder that your hip file is currently saved in. So if you pass a file, your Houdini file around and save it in different folders and it's looking for something in dollar hip, it might suddenly not be able to find it. So that's just something to bear in mind. And then one more thing that I'm going to point out that I like to do, I like to uncheck hardened base name on save. That's just because when I click save to disk, it's going to keep this as dollar OS. If it's checked on, and I hit save to disk, it will hard code whatever the value of $OS is when you click it, which has its own benefits, but um, I don't like it because I like to keep my files flexible for multiple setups, and then in that case it doesn't work. But it's completely a matter of preference. So now we have solid muscles and we can carry on. And the next step is going to be to create our fiber directions.